Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you how I film and edit all of my YouTube videos. So let's get into the video. Okay, so first things first, I go show you some equipment. So I don't have any ring lights, lights, anything like that. If I need a light really badly, like it's really dark, I'll often just use like um my iPad or um phone torch because it's a white light and all of the lights in my house are yellow lights which isn't as good for lighting. So I'm just gonna show you the tripod I use. That's the case over there if you're wondering what's on the floor. So I use this tripod, which is literally just an Amazon Basics tripod. I think it's about 12 pounds. Like it's really not that expensive. I will see if I can find it and link it down below if I can. And then I have this little bit that just slides on here and that, that attaches to the bottom of my camera because there's like a little bit for you to screw it in as it's a DSLR camera and then you just release that and you can take your camera off and then also it has so many functions like it has it can you can use this to make sure the camera's straight you can use this to make sure it's level and like it can tilt it can it can do so many things it's a really handy camera thing and it wasn't that expensive if I was <laughs> doing this professionally then I definitely get a more complex tripod and one that I could kind of keep on the camera all the time so when I'm doing this kind of talking to you I have a tripod which I don't have any tripod on right now um, I'd also probably get a microphone but I don't have a microphone and um, if I'm vlogging I would probably use my phone which I also don't have a tripod for so I would probably get one of those um, but this is all I film with so that's what I'm showing you um, also my makeup bags up there because I just did my makeup in my vlog video. I also want to show you the camera that I'm using. Um, I will insert a picture of it here. But it's the Nikon D5500 and it's a DSLR camera that I got bought by my parents to, for my photography GCSE. It's really, really good for photographs um, and probably not so good for filming. However, it films quite good quality videos. And the only problem with it is that you have to focus it manually, so I have to touch it every time I wanted to focus. Um, and it does only focus on that, like, kind of layer of vision. It won't focus, like, if I move my arm, I'm getting more and more out of focus. And if I come closer, um, but it has a good zoom. It hasn't got very good, um, I haven't got a very good lens because it's not wide angle or anything. So it's just the basic um, 18 55 millimeter lens. Um, but this is all I've got, so this is what I'm working with, but just showing you what I've got. So that is basically everything for equipment. And then to edit, um, let me just put you down on the tripod. So I do use a MacBook to film, no, to edit all of my videos. And this makes it so much easier. Um, as I've said before in the past, I've always loved editing videos. Um, however, it was basically impossible before I had a MacBook to do this. So I use my, I used to use my phone, and you could also use an iPad. Um, I use basically everything that's free because obviously I don't need this as a professional like job. So I haven't got the funds to be able to pay for um, what is it? Movie, iMovie Pro? No, I can't what it's called. Anyway. Um, so I use my MacBook Pro, um, my, I think it's a 2018 or 2019 MacBook Pro, and yeah, all I use on my MacBook is iMovie and also sometimes Keynote. Um, I will show you why I use those two in a minute. Um, but obviously if you have a phone, an iPhone or a iPad, then you get iMovie with it, you can download it for free, um, and the same with a MacBook. However, with an iPad and an iPhone, it just makes it a slightly harder because um, it hasn't got all of the functions that you'd have on iMovie for MacBook. So I'm going to show you on my MacBook exactly what I do. I filmed a video yesterday answering assumptions about me and I'm going to edit that video today, which I was planning on doing anyway, but I'm just going to show you some things that I include in my videos that, that you might want to include in yours and I'm going to show you how you can do that. Um, using all free software so you're not out of pocket for making YouTube videos. Now I'm going to switch over to my screen recording um, on my MacBook. However, I'm not sure if I can use the audio for that, so I'm going to keep this filming, keep this rolling, so it might switch to me talking to you. So the first thing that I do when I want to film a video is I obviously open iMovie. So here is my iMovie. You can see all of the videos I've uploaded recently on here. 
um, and they just choose the thumbnails. These obviously aren't the thumbnails that I chose. I'm just gonna grab some things that I need for filming this video. Ah, I need this memory card. Two seconds. So now what I've just grabbed is I've grabbed the memory card that was actually in this camera that I use basically for all filming. My mum very kindly purchased me a 32 gigabyte memory card that I've been using for ages. I also had this 64 gigabyte one for my photography, however it's full of photos. So if I wanna use this, I need to transfer my photos, which I need to do so at some point. Um, but right now in the camera, there's a 16 gigabyte one. These are all, um, these ones, SanDisk Ultra, 90 megabytes per second ones um i'll show you they're these memory cards i guess i kind of should have said that in my equipment but anyway so then i'm going to use this this um usb type c card reader on one side it has just a normal usb thing and the other side it has type c for my macbook and on this side it has micro SD cards and this side it has SD cards. That was also really inexpensive off of Amazon and if I can find it I will definitely link it down below. So all I'm doing now is just putting my SD card in the SD card reader and then putting this into my computer which you will see it then flashes up and says like you've imported this or whatever. It doesn't do that. Oh yeah, it does. So it flashes up with all my imports. This is everything that's on my SD card. Um, and this was basically everything I filmed yesterday. And that's just obviously this morning. So we'll just click on hold on those. And import to new event up here. It says import to new event. And so you then put import selected. Just like that. Okay, it's not liking that they're too big. So just import one of them. This might be too big. Okay, close that click create new, click movie, let me just make this big, you'll see some other clips from other videos come up, and then click this video, this um, button up here which is the downwards arrow and click on that and that's to import your media, so you can choose anywhere on your MacBook at the side here or anything you've inserted, so obviously I've inserted my USB, uh, my SD card reader, so then I'm going to import each video separately because it gets a bit upset, and then you can see here it's loading how much didn't mean to make that move, but how much the video is going, and up in this corner it says like importing one out of one, and that kind of shows you how much time you need. Sorry if this audio is really bad for a second, I can't use my camera audio as my SD card I was using my camera, it's obviously in my computer right now. So these just take a couple of minutes to import. So we'll just click on the other video as well, so they all start importing. Oh no, that one, that one. And if you want to import more than one at once, just click Command, hold that down and click on the other ones. My MacBook gets quite hot when it does this. I don't know if you can hear the little like, motor going, but it's getting quite hot. Okie doke, so these have now exported. Eject that. So those have obviously now imported. So now we just insert each of, each of the clips, just drag them into the timeline and just move this along, make it bigger. So now you have all of this. Now I'm not really going to teach you how to edit an iMovie because there's other videos that would do that, but it's kind of just how I do it is just kind of use the Photoshop one. So if I play this using the space bar, obviously I don't want any of this footage. So I just click Command B and it breaks it and then I click on it and delete it. And that's how I, I do it and you know, this is just me all setting up for the video. But yeah, so this is how I do, this is how I edit, this is what I do, and I'll show you, I'll show you and like me editing in a little bit. But just some simple things like how to insert, I don't know, music. You might want to go on audio, so you have all of these which are, which are your downloaded songs. I downloaded a lot of them off of YouTube audio library. Um, so you just drag and kind of insert them. You can insert them below or next to the clips so like that and then you can do many other things so for example let me go out of this project so if I go onto the onto my sixth form vlog video if I open that one up then this shows you all how I delete all the clips and also these little things where I inserted text now one thing that really stops people from using iMovie to edit their videos is that they can't insert text. Like if I insert text here saying 
subtitles, um, any of these texts, they're all going to fade in. No matter which text you choose, they're going to move. Like, it doesn't just come in and stay there. It, it, it moves in and you can't move it around. So like this one that doesn't move is centered. And you might not want your text in the center. So, you know, this is what you use. Okay, I'm gonna have to film this after um, lunch because my parents are having lunch is being very loud. So I will be back. Hello, I am back. So I just had some lunch, so back filming. So now go on to iMovie, so back on iMovie and I'll show you how to do some things. So I was explaining how all of the text like fade in. So for example, if I insert this one, it literally, you know, the title text here, as I'm filming, it goes like that, it fades in. All of them do that or you and you can't move about where they are. So I'm gonna show you a trick now of how to insert text without doing that. So open Keynote on your MacBook and I click a new document, doesn't matter what document I open, just open a presentation. And then here you type the text that you want on your screen. So for example, if I said assumptions, because it's an assumptions video, um, just delete the other one. And then you can choose whatever font you have. So I either have it on the kind of classic Helvetia newer, whatever it is, but you can choose whatever you want it on. You know, you can have it on fancy, whatever you want. You choose completely what you have it on. But anyway, let's go back to the original one, just about to show you. And you choose what colour you want it. So if we go back onto the video, it's kind of, um, I think black might show it well, maybe white. But you just choose your colour. So go back onto Keynote. And it's already white text. And then if I just make, make it black for a second, just so I can play around with it. Just change the text colour over here. Um, and then make the background size, so just click on the background, just make it uh, white. And then I'm just going to play around with shadows, because shadows look good on, on iMovie. So you go up to style in the corner, and then go down to shadow. And I think, is it drop shadow? No, it's, it must be, I think it's contact shadow. I honestly can't remember which one it is. Yeah, it's the shadow kind of behind the letters. And then you can kind of make, you can make the shadow more or less. You can have quite a lot, doesn't really matter, but that's the shadow that I've gone for. Okay, so if you're happy with that, and that is what, how you want the word to be written on your screen. So if you're happy with that, then go ahead, so you can change it, anything like that. But if you're happy with that, then go ahead and change the text back to the colour you want it. So for me, I want it white. And then the background, just click on the background, so don't click in the text box, click on the background like this. And you're going to go and change the background to no fill and it'll go black but even if your slide is black you need to make sure it's on no fill just here and then you're going to go up to in the corner to file and export to and you're going to put images okay and then you're going to change the format to png click next and then just save it somewhere so for me i'm just going to save it as assumptions and if you want different text, you can make different slides on here and they're all save as individual images. And like if you want one for the same video. And then go back onto your iMovie and click import just here. And go on to, I think I saved it in, must be in documents, yeah, assumptions, it's a folder. Then just click on it and put import all. And there it is up here. So now drag that into your thing. And you'll see immediately the background goes, the black background goes, and you've just got the word assumptions, which I think I've spelled wrong, which is awkward. <laughs> uh, just ignore that, it doesn't matter what word it is. And then you're going to, because now it's just on your video, and if you watch the video, it kind of fades and gets bigger, and then like fades out. So, we don't want any of that, so we're going to go to, not Ken's Burn, we're going to go to Fit. So this little crop tool up here, click Fit, when you've selected it here. And then go back onto this bit, and it's on in cutaway right now, and you want it to be picture in picture, so you can still see this, and you want to get rid of the dissolve, so just just highlight that and click the zero and enter. And then you can move this around whatever size you want. So if I just had it here, and I just put assumptions, 
now it shouldn't fade in it should just pop up and you can add obviously sound effects with that or whatever you'd like so you can also do that by you can use also use Qnate to create um, Instagram um, kind of things like um, Instagram handles and other social media handles so for example I have mine I've also created this one that says subscribe and I've also created this one which is a like button um, obviously edit those so they don't fade in and out aha here one so I just used the tools on um, Keynote to create this so back onto Keynote but all I did was insert shapes and then kind of chose this shape and edited it so it was like a kind of circular shape, copied that, pasted that over the top of each other, changed the colours so like made this one, I don't know, made this one like a darker colour. So for example if you look back at my one I've just done pink and white and then I just found an Instagram logo which I inserted there and then just wrote my Instagram handle on there. So that's why I did that and then obviously exported it in the same way as I did before. The only thing different with like social media handles, so you you know you change everything like we did before, so change that to fit, change it to picture in picture, delete the opacity, make it nice and big. So if you want to insert an Instagram handle and you want a sound effect, what lots of people use on iMovie is the pop, I think, one. So up here on audio, go instead of to I think um instead of music, instead of iTunes on the side here, go to sound effects and you will have so many sound effects anyway so a lot of youtubers use this one if they've forgotten to insert it i've used that before in the past a typewriter and um, but the one that we use for the one that we use for inserting like handles instagram handles is the bottle cork so you might recognize it so to insert it just drag it and make sure you pop it exactly where you want it to come in so I wanted to come in as soon as you see the Instagram handle which is just here and not before there you go and so then it inserts I don't know if you can hear that it inserts exactly the right time so that's how you do that that's how you insert handles and also text into your videos um, the only other thing I've done is I will show you to I use this I got this off of Canva and just edited the text so I use that every single time just to I put it at the end of my videos so that um, I can have some way of putting putting the like subscribe and video ideas at the end like video suggestions at the end and then I also use a song that I use every single time and I just copy this from my last video because I've edited it um, just copy go back onto the video and paste it and I make sure to use these little toggles to fade it in and fade it out and whatever um, Just you just move it around like you drag them out like this and it will fade it in and fade it out so for example right now this is how it fades out it doesn't fade out it doesn't fade out at all but if I drag this across it will slowly get quieter which is cool and yeah, so that's kind of how I edit my videos. Obviously, there's a lot of things you can do on iMovie in terms of you can add in transitions. Like I add in the slide left when I start the video. So like when I say, let's get into the video. Um, let me find that little bit. And I cut that. And then just to the next bit, I just click slide right just there. Insert that. always the first time it goes a bit jolty but then obviously when you export it it's absolutely fine so once you've kind of got your video sorted so for example my last video share product i'm not going to show share project i'm not going to show you um what is on that because it shows my like email account for youtube um but basically if you have good wi-fi you can click straight on youtube but as i don't i have to click wait i'll just show you you have to click file and then it exports and saves the file to your computer where you can then go on to YouTube Studio to upload it. So I use YouTube Studio a lot and I don't know if everyone knows about YouTube Studio um, but I will show you what YouTube Studio is right now. Okie dokes, so here is my channel. It shows me, I don't think there's anything on here you can't see. Um, it shows me my last video, how it did, um, my current subscriber rate, my current views, all of that. 
and basically to upload a video all you do is I'm just going on to video right now and you go on create up here upload video and then select file and then you can choose whichever document it is so for example it's the things I'm using right now just click that and then click choose and it will start to upload um, wait I'll show you one just to um, right anyway so then you know you get to go on here it's got how much uploaded it is you have to change the title the description add upload a thumbnail and then whether it's made for kids and then also make sure to use tags in your videos you can do this after it's uploaded but add tags because it helps them out video elements oh let me just click no and then you've also got visibility so you can schedule it for whatever day you want and then I'm going to show you how I make thumbnails so I use a website called Canva so you can see all my other thumbnails are on here um, this is my school morning routine one which is my most popular video at the moment so I'll show you this one it's just a tool for thumbnails I just choose a picture so this is what I end up with my thumbnail being you just choose a picture you upload the picture on this uploads tool thing here upload media you can see these are all of my other thumbnails um, thumbnail options as well um, you upload a picture and then you just use the texts and things like they have different texts and stuff that you can use over it so that's all I do for thumbnails and then I download it and then upload it again onto the video that's uploading the thing the only other thing I can think to that you'd want to insert is some people like to insert I used to insert this a lot I don't really do it anymore you can download these things called like green screens so for example this one says subscribe and then plays a bell So you can download those sorts of things which are really really great but basically in order to use them, I'm just going to teach you how to use them in iMovie, you go to this bit up here and instead of cutaway you do green screen slash blue screen. The only problem with iMovie and this is you can't really move it around so it's just kind of in the middle of the video um, because the only thing you can do is like make it like more like that which isn't very helpful. Um, and my, video, my computer's really overheating. So yeah, that is basically everything I think you'd want to know about my videos. I use tags, I use, I use the description. Um, so that is basically everything I do to film and edit YouTube videos. If there's anything else you think I've missed or not covered, then please let me know. And obviously you can add music and stuff and just fading it in and out, but I kind of showed you how to do that. Um, but it's kind of just learning as you go and also learning what's right because what works for me might not be the style of video you want to make so you kind of got to just play around with all the stuff that I've showed you and find what works for you so apart from that editing my videos I kind of just cut bits out that I'm not talking in yeah just kind of cut bits out and add some music in and that's about it um, I don't really do anything really fancy um, just to the little effects like zooming in and adding sound effects and changing it to black and white can actually add a lot of character to your videos um, so be sure to use those functions and just play around with what you've got anyways thank you so much for watching my video if you enjoyed make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel down below and I'll see you again very soon for another video bye